Welcome to the Gypsy Nurse Spring 2023 Virtual Conference, sponsored by TravCon. Your road to TravCon 2023 begins here. The Gypsy Nurses Spring 2023 Virtual Conference will be providing you and thousands of other travel healthcare professionals with five educational sessions to help you spring into your travel nursing career. Whether you're new to travel healthcare or looking for ways to stay up to date with tips and trends, the Gypsy Nurse and TravCon have got you covered. Looking to take the Gypsy Nurse Virtual Conference to the next level? Join us in person in Las Vegas, September 17th through the 20th for the event of the year for travelers at TravCon 2023. TravCon is amazing. Yeah, he's right. TravCon is amazing. Let's be real. Where else can you go to be surrounded by people who really get you? That's rhetorical. This is the place to go. My favorite thing about TravCon is meeting all the recruiters personally so I can get a real feel for how these companies actually are. So I love TravCon. See, she loves it. My favorite thing about TravCon is meeting not only the recruiters but other healthcare workers because the travel industry is kind of small. It's not big and out there. A lot of people don't know about traveling. TravCon is the place to go to learn about travel. We have a newbie boot camp that walks you through how to successfully become a traveling healthcare worker. Don't worry though, we have a lot of classes for veteran travelers too. You can even get your CEs here. So I really like meeting and networking and nurses, like I said, recruiters, there's credentialers here, there's a bunch, you know, of people here and then meeting the ally staff and then meeting new friends. New friends? Look around you might just meet your new best friend. Yes, making friends too, yes. Long-term friends, yeah. <laughs> this is my second TravCon. I plan to go to everyone until I die. Hopefully I can find my wife here someday. Maybe a spouse. I wouldn't count on that though. You've got amazing speakers, great networking, new best friends, coffee all day, and don't forget the swag. The booths like to have games and give away some great prizes. Love TravCon because I get to enter to win Chanel bags, Louis bags, and Gucci bags. Lots of swag options. Okay, I know you're having fun with your new friends, shooting some hoops, but let's not forget, this is Vegas. I'm here for a good time, baby don't stop, don't stop. Take it easy, that's what I'm gonna do. Take it easy, show you how to move. Take it easy, go and fix your ass. If you're looking for a good, good time, come and find me, we do it real quick. TravCon 2023 is one you're not going to want to miss. More information at TravCon.org. Early bird tickets are now on sale. Get the lowest price you can get before early bird ends. Tickets are currently $379 and will be going up soon. Thank you TravCon for being our sponsor. Don't forget to get your early bird tickets to get the best price you can get. Please welcome Great Recruiters founder Adam Conrad and his panel of certified recruiters, Olivia Jarvis with Atlas Med Staff, Chelsea Larson with AB Staffing, and JT Jumanville with Travel Nurses Across America. 23 Virtual Spring Conference. My name is Adam Conrad. I am the founder and CXO of Great Recruiters, and I am joined here today with a wonderful panel of Great Recruiters certified uh, recruiters here on our on our platform, and I'm joined here with Olivia Jarvis from Atlas Med Staff, Chelsea Larson from AB Staffing, and JT Jumanville from TNAA. And uh, just before we we kick off, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, TGN and our partnership. Uh, our goal is to help create more transparency for the travelers out there. Uh, we're working together to make sure that travelers have all of the resources available for them. 
uh, to be able to make great decisions about where they want to go next. And in today's session, we're going to talk to three of the leading recruiters in each of their agencies who are highly rated on the great recruiters platform. They are all GR certified. Uh, and so they are definitely people that you can trust who have been there and done that and really here to share their experiences with you about what it means to work with a with a with a travel recruiter what it work what it means to work with an agency and really the goal is to provide you as much value from their perspective on how to make your traveling career uh, a very successful one uh, as we kind of drive into this here a little bit i want to go ahead and just give you an overall understanding of great recruiters if you haven't heard of us and really our mission is to increase transparency between the travelers and the recruiters through real-time reviews. And so travelers have the ability to provide their real-time insights reviews on their experience working with those recruiters. And ultimately, we wanna help travelers find great assignments by connecting them with great recruiters. One of the things that we've done to help showcase uh, who those firms are that you should be definitely talking to first is we have a great recruiter certification where us as an organization are standing behind those firms who have the quality processes in place to ensure quality experiences for you. They have highly rated uh, recruiting teams uh, and they're transparent uh, about what people are saying and what people are doing. And we also have our top rated awards uh, that you'll be seeing. So these are all top rated uh, healthcare staffing firms for the second half of 2022. Uh, but Great Recruiters is really a platform to help them manage the quality of the services they provide, gain insight from the people that they work with, and be able to share that with other travelers. Uh, we understand that people trust reviews as much as a friend's recommendation, and this platform will allow you to gain that insight of what your peers uh, think about working with each of these recruiters. And so just to kind of jump in here, I uh, just want to go around and do some introductions uh one of the first people that i'd like to go ahead and uh talk to here is olivia and uh as i mentioned olivia is from atlas med staff and uh olivia feel free to talk about yourself and uh i'm going to go ahead and share your uh your great recruiters reviews up there as you can see she is uh, a 499 100 highly recommended she is gr certified and olivia welcome uh to this webinar uh would love to hear a little bit more about you and the great work you guys are doing over at atlas med staff awesome thank you for having me um well i'm olivia jarvis i have been in the recruiting world for almost two years prior to that i was a travel nurse myself and i've been a nurse for nine years um, so i bring a little bit of a different edge to it because i've truly walked the walk and <laughs> done the talk um i'm based out of reno nevada I love recruiting just because it kind of allows me to bridge the gap between still having my nurse brain, but also getting to help people find their ideal assignment, um, find out what they're looking for, find out their why, and connect the two pieces to have the best relationship. So that's me. Thanks so much. Uh, next, we have Chelsea Larson. Chelsea is come to us from AB Staffing. She's a senior healthcare recruiter and just want to give you a little insight into who Chelsea is. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I pretty much got into health recruiting. Um, my mother is an NP and I went to Boise State University and graduated with a health degree. Um, I shadowed her and decided that I didn't want to be on that side of it. I all, all respect to everyone out there, but it just wasn't for me. Um, I actually have been recruiting now for almost two years and absolutely love this side of it. Um, I think I like hearing the stories and getting to know every personality and everything like that more than actually being out on there. But so much respect for those. Um, that's amazing. Like, Olivia, I don't know how you did it for nine years. That is so great. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of kind of me. Um, I absolutely love what I do and getting to kind of just meet people and hearing all the walks of life and I don't know, out there putting people to work and having them save all the lives. Awesome. And uh, finally here, uh, J.T. Drummondville over from TNAA. He is a recruiting manager over there. And uh, J.T., you've been on the platform some time. Uh, yes. So I know in a couple different roles, uh, those reviews are, are starting to climb. The ratings are as well. And uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Yeah, hey guys, I'm JT. I'm one of the recruitment managers at Travel Nurse Across America, TNAA. Um, I've been with the agency since 2020, um, so right at three years now, um, and just really love the the autonomy and the culture we have at our agency. Um, you know, I understand the high stress situations as well. I was a Marine Corps veteran, so I really am able to relate a lot with my travelers and and understand the high stress that they go through, but also bring the uh, the fruition on the backside, that support and that that care and that that understanding and, and really just that connection at the end of the day. So and as you can see, um, lots of great recruiter um, profile reviews, so on and so forth. But um, I believe I'm one of the highest reviewed on the, the platform. It's great, so. man. It's awesome. I, I agree. And, uh, you know, as we kind of dig into this, um, as we kind of talk about you know, what's important. What I'd love for you to each share is really what does great recruiters mean to you and, and what does being a GR certified recruiter mean to the travel nursing community? Um, JT, I'll go ahead and, and reverse it around and start with you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge thing for me because we're meeting people over the phone, you know, at the end of the day. And we're really setting you know, letting, allowing someone to put their lives in some sense in our hands and letting us direct them and guide them and really be that. I joke a lot and I say, I'm going to be your spirit guide, you know? And so what great recruiters does is it allows me to say, Hey, this is who I am. This is my background. And this is what other nurses are actually saying about working with me. And it's not 10, 20, 30, it's, it's a hundred plus, you know? And so that shows the, not only the reach that I've had in the nursing community, but it, it allows you and the great recruiters allows you to just, again, create that platform, create that, that whole picture for, for the nurse. And so they can go in and do their own research as well. But again, it's just kind of that, that backboard for you. Yeah. And as, as a recruiting manager, like how does this system help you help the other recruiters on your team kind of maintain the quality that they're working with, with the, the travelers out there? Yeah, I really just think it's just using the platform consistently, you know, reaching out and allowing and letting the nurses know that, hey, this is a way that you can give me feedback, you know, a way that you can help me grow as a, as a recruiter. You know, because we only want to do that for our recruiters is help them grow and help the nurses grow in that aspect. So this platform just bridges that, you know, it allows us to say, hey, you know, this is where we are missing the mark. Hey, this is where we can do better, so on and so forth. So I really think that's where that comes together. And where, where's the value if you were to say like to a, a traveler, why? Why work with somebody who is great recruiter certified versus maybe somebody who doesn't? What, what is that value that they're getting out of that relationship? Well, again, it's your it's your human. We're all human. And it shows you that you're you're good at your job, that people trust you, that people find your value, people find your strengths. And, you know, I think that's a, a really strong, strong aspect to it, you know, because we want to trust who we're working with. We want to trust the person that you're working with to get in the car and drive halfway across the country. So to be able to read reviews from other travelers that have done that same thing with me, um, it gives just that warm and fuzzy, you know, it gives you that, that, that fallback. And it's just like, all right, Hey, I, I do feel well, you know, I do feel well about the decision that I'm making. I do feel confident about moving forward because, Hey, there's so many people that have done this with this person. It's like, it's like going to a restaurant, you know, if you read uh, 10 bad reviews about this restaurant and then you read 10 good reviews about the restaurant right next door, which one are you probably going to walk in the door with? You know, so that's really where it's at. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, uh, moving over here to, to Chelsea. Chelsea, can you talk a little bit uh, about what great recruiters means to you and, and what being a GR certified recruiter means to, to your travelers? Yeah, so kind of going off what JT said too, I feel like I really love this platform because it really backs like me up as a recruiter too. Um, like you said, you don't really like you meet, don't meet these people face to face. Um, I'm still actually in office and are based out of Arizona. Um, and I actually have been fortunate to, I mean, granted it was only two, but I've met two of them <laughs> in real life, which is kind of cool because they, they too like went on and they could see reviews and just again, backs me up like as a recruiter, because I do pride myself on transparency and basically just communication and the relationships that you build with them because you really only have a phone between you. That's it. Um, and at the end of the day, it's, yeah, it's their livelihood. It's pretty much, yeah, like he said, driving across country that you don't want someone that if you can't get a hold of them, like they're you're their point of contact, um, like while they're away from their family and friends and everything. And if they can't get a hold of you, or if that's like a bad review that you have is you don't answer your phone, like that to me is 
something that I wouldn't want to work with them if I'm away from my family, you know? So I think that's a really great platform too, just to really kind of prove yourself as a recruiter um, and kind of back up, I mean, I guess yourself and have other people want to work with you as well. So, and it's open that they could see. Yeah. And I think you made a good point. Like there are situations we are all human and sometimes we do drop the ball and with great recruiters, you know, that ball's being put back in your hands. You're going to find out if somebody didn't have a good experience. And I think everybody here and most people in the industry want to want to create a great experience, but we're not perfect. And so I think being able to understand the, the negative as well puts the power in your hands to be able to resolve those issues before they become problems. Right, right. Yeah, that's, I mean, one thing too is, I mean, I just pride myself on the relationships too that I can make with these nurses. Um, and I feel like most of them, I mean, majority of them now, I feel like, feel like I'm probably one of their friends now that they could call if they have any issues. And I think that's a big thing too. And if you don't have that, it's really, really hard kind of to be away and do your job as well. Like as, I mean, I'm sure Olivia can attest to that too, as she was a travel nurse. So really hard to do that if you don't have communication with either the facility or a manager or your recruiter to do that for you. So you can focus really on just your job while you're out there. Yep. No, that's, that's great. And uh, moving over here, last but not least, Olivia Jarvis from Atlas Med Staff. Uh, I love the background. My wife is a nurse, uh, which is awesome for me because I'm getting insight from her. But uh, talk to us from that 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 perspective of being a traveler. Um, in, in nine years, you've seen this industry drastically change, um, where there was not a lot of transparency, and I think now we're we're seeing a lot more. So I'd love to hear your perspective on. One, as a nurse, what, what, would you have loved to have a, a great recruiter, certified recruiter? And what would that have done for you as a nurse? How would that help you? And then as you moved into the recruiting uh, world, how has it helped you there? So I feel like the easiest way to describe it, honestly, is I tell my travelers all the time, and it was the same when I was traveling. Um, I always ask you for references to check in and see how you're doing and keep your profile up to date. Now's your time to flip the script on me and tell me, what I can do better, what I've done great. Um, relationships are everything to me in this industry and were everything to me as a traveler looking for a recruiter. I traveled for six years. I didn't need somebody to hold my hand after a while. I just needed somebody to be there for support if things went bad or if something went a little haywire. And great recruiter, I think the most important thing to me about it is it's unbiased. It's not put out there by a specific agency. These are real nurses that have really worked with me in different specialties to show my value, to show my transparency, to show that I'm leading with the best foot forward. When I started traveling, the industry was so different. It was in 2017, so long before COVID. Um, you had to work with certain agencies to get certain jobs because there was direct contracts. And a lot of times they were blocking out other agencies. For example, I worked on at Vanderbilt and cross country was the direct with them. And that was it. So I went to cross country, but I didn't have any friends that were working there. I had no way to know if I was getting the best recruiter or a brand new recruiter. So for me, it provides the validity in, you know, using a site like Great Recruiter to know that going into a new company, you are getting the best of the best. Or, um, you know, this is what my expectations are. Do, do these reviews show me that this is the type of person that I want to work with? I think it definitely provides a lot of added value because some of my travelers are very uh, basic with their review and they're to the point and they say what they need to say and others truly highlight our relationship and how things work on my desk. And I think it's great because it gives them an overview of what they can expect. And just a follow up, like when you get that review and, and, and reading some of these reviews, I, I'm astounded at the amount of attention and detail and, and emotion that goes into these. Like, how does that how does that impact you all as recruiters when you get that review? How, how does that make your day? <laughs> I would say it's better than any gift. It is a huge compliment and it really shows that what I'm striving to provide is actually being received on the other end. So it's huge to me. It's everything. Yeah, I would say the exact same thing. It's, um, you know, when I see the, re the reviews come in and, 
it's just like your a light goes off, you know, it brightens your day. It's, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time and deal with a lot of stressful situations. So it's just a way to, to lift us up a little bit on our side too. So I love the support. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Not much. And so Chelsea, did you have something to add there? No, I just agree with both of them. I feel like that is like, I mean, obviously you put these people to work and that is just like co it coming back into like, it's like full circle. Like it's just coming back that like you did your job and they're happy, you're happy. Like, I feel like it's just, it is, it's, it's a great. It's good. And, and I think that when we talk about, and we're going to get into building relationships, you know, this is a way to know that you might have not placed somebody but, you know, you get those reviews back as somebody you might not have placed that still had a positive experience. To me, uh, you might not place everybody that you talk to, but you have 100% of an opportunity to provide value to everybody. And that leads into future referrals, future opportunities for that individual. And really, it, it, it speaks volumes about the brand. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. I'll, I want to start with, uh, with uh, Chelsea here. Um, talk to us about what the most important things that travelers, from your perspective, should be looking for when working with a recruiter uh, and an agency. Yeah, so I feel like I, I guess kind of touched on this, too, when I was talking about great recruiters in general. But I think that, I mean, you as a human know you don't always vibe with everyone, too. And I think that that's the most important thing is being able to vibe with the, the nurse and just like you want to make their their experience pleasurable. Um, I pride myself on just transparency and communication. Um, I don't ever want to send someone out to an assignment where whether it's 30 minutes away or 30 hours away, like I don't want to send someone out onto an assignment with them not knowing like the ins and outs of everything. Obviously, I don't know everything. I'm not there. But of everything that I do know, I want them to know as well. I want to set them up for success. Um, and I don't want, like, that's just the worst is having someone go out there and uh, just be completely opposite of what, if you like let it on to be something different or something like that, I would hope that would not be the case, but just basically setting them up for success. Um, basically another, I mean, another thing too, is you're their point of contact. They're away from their family. You're they're away from their friends. They're away from literally anyone, um, whether they're working night shift, day shift, whatever it may be, they may need someone to just vent or talk to, um, that's pretty much, I mean, I get, I got a phone call at 5 a.m. this morning in Arizona because she just needed to vent about her shift that happened. And that's like what I'm here for. And I just listen. And granted, I'm not a nurse. I'm not there. I don't know what's going on, but I can just be relatable and just kind of just give them that the comfort that they need because um, they are away from their families. So that's kind of, I mean, my biggest thing is if you are working with someone as a nurse, I think would, I mean, like to think that you would pretty much look for kind of your relationship with them. And if they're really just kind of pitching you a job and letting you do your thing and go and do, I don't know, go on with the position, or if they're kind of just keeping in touch with you, like I um, do pulse checks on my nurses all the time to make sure everything's okay. Uh, make sure that everything is going smoothly and anything that I can do to be better as a recruiter or if I need to get in contact with the facility or whatever the case may be, I'm in full communication with them for the whole 13 weeks or extensions or however long they're out there. I'm always communicating with them. Um, so I think that's a really big thing too is knowing that you have someone there in your corner that's going to advocate for you and make sure that it's the best uh, contract that you can take. Great. And, and Olivia, over to you. And I, I you know, it's going to be this two sided thing. You've, you've been on both sides. So, you know, what were you as a traveler? What were the things that mattered to you when you were working with a recruiter? What were the important things that you were looking for in their in their qualities and, and actions and behaviors? So I would say contrary to what most believe that like, oh, you know, you have to have somebody in healthcare for them to understand one of my favorite recruiters is not has no background in the healthcare industry other than recruiting and honestly it was him the relationship we had i trusted him through and through i didn't need much because i was an experienced traveler but there was times i would come to him in just one event or just tell him something exciting that was going on in my life or something not so great but he always had my back and it wasn't i didn't need instantaneous communication i didn't you know my expectation with my nurses is that I get back to them as soon as I can. Sometimes that's going to be 
in a 30 seconds or less. Sometimes it's going to be in an hour, but my expectation is if they reach out during business hours or even off business hours that they get a response the same day. Um, so I just try to uphold that because that was what was given to me. And I think that a lot of times recruiters are their nurse's lifeline. Hey, I got poked with a needle at work. What is the process that I need to do? Hey, I had an unexpected death in the family. What do I do? You know, those things that come up and are real life things that they do need the recruiter's advice for. I think the other caveat to that is unfortunately there are are other recruiters out there that essentially they see it as a transaction. To me, it should never be transaction. And I think one of the number one things you should look for when you're looking for a good recruiter is someone that is willing to put the time in, in the beginning when you have nothing built with them and are just starting out as a prospect to making sure everything is good as gold and you are starting on time and they are checking in with you periodically throughout the assignment. I don't need somebody to check in with me daily, not even weekly, but I do pulse checks just like Chelsea does all the time. Some of my travelers want to talk to me weekly, some want monthly, and that works for them. I let them kind of guide that, um, but they always know that I'm there. And sometimes it'll be a poke of like, hey, just a two-week check-in. How's everything? Are you good? You know, I'm obviously more communicative in the very beginning just because that's when the most things come up. But my expectation with my travelers is that I always check in every two to four weeks, if not more than that, that's coming up, you know, just because we need to talk about something else. Um, but it's really having, driving home that relationship, that trust, that support that they need when they're on the road and away from everybody and everything they need. So, so, I mean, a good question for travelers listening to this, that's, that's who this is all about is like, you're as much interviewing to find somebody to help you with that travel career. I mean, the goal would be for me, if I'm in that situation is like, I'd want two or three people that I really trust because not everybody has access to everything, but I want to have those resources. And so, you know, maybe that's a really good question to ask up front is you're kind of vetting who to work with is what's your process once I'm on assignment? What's that going to look like? What's the support look like? Is it you? Is it somebody else? Um, so I think that's really good. And I love the point you made, Olivia, is you have to meet them where they're at, right? Uh, we used to do a fanatical Friday and we call everybody every Friday. And eventually they're like, look, I don't need you to call me every Friday. So it's about meeting the expectations of where they're at and responsiveness means different things to different people based on where they are in their career and where they are in their needs. If I'm a brand new traveler, yeah, I might want somebody checking in with me daily. Who knows? Uh, but I right. think that's those are questions that if you're not being asked that, it might be an indicator that they don't have a good process in place to help manage that once you're on assignment. Correct. And I think that's one of the things that comes up as much as I'm interviewing them when we're, you know, at that prospecting point, I want them to interview me as well. What do you yeah. want to know about me? What is your preferred communication style? When is best for you? What time zone are you in? You know, those kinds of things to keep it as much of a process as possible because they know at the end of the day, much like myself, JT and Chelsea, we all have desks with multiple travelers to work with. They're not our only, but we are trying to figure out a way of best serving them every single time. Awesome. And, and JT, from a recruiting management perspective, talk to us about, and I'm very familiar with all of these firms and and, and the quality that you guys put into training and development. Um you don't place every nurse. So like once the nurse on Simon, I think we hit on with, with Chelsea and Olivia said how to, how to help make sure that you know you have a great recruiter. But, you know, what are the things up front uh, that recruiters should be or uh, travelers should be looking for when they're making that initial introduction? Like what, what are those qualities, questions that they should be going, OK, yeah, I'm 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 in good hands. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it's it's a big thing is is all about transparency. It's it's also sometimes tenure. You know, you can get on the phone and like both of these ladies have said, you cannot vibe with them. You can have some kind of disconnect. But I really think, you know, the follow up responsiveness is, is a huge thing, like just letting them know, setting those expectations on the front end. You know, hey, this is what is, you know, my communication style, so on and so forth. But also talking to them just simply about their goals, you know, really diving into somewhat of their personal life in some sense. Why are we on the phone? You know, why are you traveling? Are you having issues with the politics at your hospital? Are you not making enough money? Are you, 
needing to buy a house? Are you have a, a divorce going on? Are you whatever? I mean, I've heard it all. I'm sure we all have, um, you know, but also just understanding what their clinical experience is and what it has been and what they want it to be. I think that's a big thing, too, because, you know, there's a lot of agencies and there's a lot of recruiters out there and there's a lot of those people that just shoot from the hip. It's like, hey, any hospital that has a high rate, let's send them off, blah, blah, blah. But any of my travelers, you know, I work with quite a few travelers. OK, and I tell them all I don't ever want to get the phone call where you're, you're ending up at a bad hospital. I, I will tell you, I won't submit you to certain places if I know it's not a great hospital for you to work at. And, you know, just listening to them and understanding that. But I really think those are some initial things that if a recruiter is doing that stuff for you is really diving in and, and really getting in the micro about you, you know, and then I flip that on the back end when I'm done doing that. And I say, hey, what what do you want from me? You know, what do you expect from me? Because I want to meet those expectations, because if I'm not, we're not going to have a good relationship. You know, it's just like any relationship. If one person's putting in the effort and the other's not it doesn't work. It will always fall apart. So, you know, getting on that same page is huge for me. And and, and that's when working with a recruiter, when, what are things they should be considering about, about what agency? Cause I might love you JT, yeah. right. As a person, but how do I know, like, what are the things that they should be looking for in an agency to help provide that support beyond just the work that you're doing as a recruiter? Well, I think it's your, your support staff, you know, it's um, also how long has the agency been around? You know, has the agency been recognized for what the work they do? So, like, for instance, um, TGN, we were rated best overall agency. We were most loyal and most traveler centric. You know, those are things that me, if I was in an RN seat, hey, these those those accolades were voted by RNs, not us. It's not some outside people we paid or anything like that. These were RNs going in and voting. So to me, I'm like, hey, I want to find out who those people are and these agencies on this this screen right now we're on those lists and we're runner ups or winners in those categories. And so to me, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that have that, that clout per se. Yeah. And I'll add in, you know, look for that great recruiter certification for the sure. agency yes. because that's saying, Hey, look, we've, we've audited and understand they have the process in place. They have a high percentage of their team who are GR certified and you don't just achieve that. You have to create the work. As Olivia said, it's like, this isn't this isn't her words. This is what the the people think, and and it's a hundred percent genuine and transparent. Uh, switching gears, maybe same question a little bit, but I just curious to hear from Olivia um, from your experience. What are red flags? Like, what were some of the things that you identified early on in your career that you might not have recognized they were red flags, but like as you learned and became more experienced, you're like that's something to avoid. What 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 should uh, travelers be aware of. So JT kind of touched on this a little bit, but their initial conversation is everything to me. I do dive into their personal life. I, you know, tell them a little bit about me, but that first conversation to me is very much like, tell me about you and what you're looking for so that I can best serve you. And however that may be, you know, is, is it someone that, has a sick family member and needs to go to this location because they need to go take care of that person or, you know, just got out of a bad relationship and just looking for somewhere fun to rejuvenate and relax. Listening, being that recruiter to listen and apply that is huge. I see a lot of generic text messages because I, after not traveling for two years, still get text messages from recruiters multiple times a week trying to recruit me. Um, but you'll see some very generic conversation. You'll see no follow, you know, all this promise up front, but no follow through um, about communication, about transparency. If a traveler truly wants to talk bill rates, I'll break it all down for them so they know exactly what they're getting into. One of the biggest things that I did not know for a very long time, I would say almost two years, like the full gist of it is proper duplication of expenses. What does that look like? How does that work? Um, what are the best ways to find housing? Renew my certifications. Simple things, but things that a new traveler doesn't necessarily know coming in. Is it okay for me to work with more than one recruiter or is it going to cause issues? Am I going to lose trust? You know, is my recruiter no longer going to want to work with me because I took a job with JT because Chelsea didn't have it? Um, you know, those kinds of things that you have to lean into. I've seen a lot of, I unfortunately experienced this one time. I 
had got one of those text messages, hey, we're looking for nurses at this hospital, this pay, this location, this shift. Everything looked great. I reached back out, got an interview same day or next day, really quick, um, signed that contract, and I never heard from that recruiter again. I had a payroll problem. I had to escalate it to the manager and then to the CFO in order to get paid. So at the end of the day, it comes full circle when you're looking at an agency and value. I think everything that JT said is important. I also think, can, you know, is the agency known for not paying their nurses? Are they going to follow up with you? Is there compliance on top of their game? There's so much that goes into this that you don't know as a brand new traveler. So kind of walking them through start to finish, hey, this is what it looks like to build a profile. This is what it looks like to look at jobs and see pay packages. Do you know how to duplicate expenses? This is what it is. Here's what I'd recommend for how to find housing. Um, you know, okay, we've signed the contract now. What is good to ask for in a contract versus what is something that is generally not put into a contract? What is an at-will contract mean? You know, those kinds of things that a new traveler would not know. And just being their education standpoint and being transparent the whole way through so they know exactly what they're getting into and there's nothing left unturned. Awesome. And, and Chelsea, you know, one of the things that I... <laughs> That I used to look for, and, and it was like, hey, if the recruiter's talking more than you and it's your initial conversation, to me, that was the number one red light, right? If they're leading with their agenda and what they need to fill, it's it's a big red light of what you're probably going to get because they're looking to be transactional, make that move fast. Uh, and so if they're not taking the time to seek to understand up front, I always looked at that as a red light. But Chelsea, what are, what are some of your thoughts on any red flags that you think uh, travelers should be looking for when they're uh, working with the recruiter? Yeah, well, you can't see me right now, but my jaw literally dropped when she said that she didn't hear from her recruiter for the entire contract. Oh my God, that gives me anxiety thinking about it. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I... That, I don't know. That's just so crazy to me. Um, like I said too, for, I mean, earlier, I mean, I know I keep touching on this as your point of contact, but that to me is just so important. Um, and then for AB staffing in general, um, kind of, I think something that sets us apart um, is we're all under one roof. So that's another kind of cool thing too, is I like to tell people while I'm on the phone with them is I don't have to wait for like a time change or something like that to call payroll if something, if someone's not getting paid or I don't have to wait. And if their physical is out of date and they're out of compliance, I don't have to wait for that time zone for someone else to get a physical in so that they're not pulled from the floor. Kind of things like that. Um, just basically, yeah, we're all under one roof. And I like to kind of lead with that too, just because I think that, I mean, granted, I'm not a traveler, but I like to think that puts some sort of ease at it too, just because you kind of have access to literally everyone in the same office. Um, yep. Granted, not everyone's in office, some are working from home, but <laughs> um, we still have that as well too. But that I think, yeah, it's, I mean, I know that Olivia said earlier that some people will treat nurses kind of just like a transaction type thing. And I think that to me is a huge, huge red flag because I pride myself on the relationship aspect of it. So to me, even if I like hear it, that just, ooh, I don't like it rubs me the wrong way because I just don't like it at all. Um, like I just, yeah, I think it's makes everything like on my side and on their side a whole lot easier when you have that relationship, whether you're touching base with them. I don't know, every week, every three weeks, whatever the case may be. I think that, I mean, that to me is just a big red flag if you don't talk to someone while they're on an assignment. I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, and I think that, you know, the, the, the pieces for travelers out there is ask, as you can see, hey, AB value is they're all under one roof. TNAA, I know, is, uh, is dispersed. Uh, Atlas is under one roof. But I, I think... You know, there's a lot of different setups that are very successful, but they also it also depends on what the traveler is looking for and what's going to make them what's going to make them happy. And so I think, you know, ask those questions, ask those questions up front when you're meeting with the recruiter is what is your support system? Are you around? Are you here just for, you know, just for the beginning? What happens when I'm on assignment? Who do I talk to? You know, where are my resources? I mean, however you're set up, the important thing is to make sure that there's transparency of where people can go for those resources when they need it and when they need it 
Olivia hit on it, you better be responsive, right? You don't want to wait when you have that uh, moment. So um, talk to me a little bit, uh, JT, how how do you build trust as a recruiter? How do you build trust and, and, and build relationships with your travelers? What are the things that you think are important, not just for the people you place, but maybe people that you talk to that you like, that you didn't have the right opportunity today? But what does that look like over for you at TNAA? I personally just, I'm, a, I'm myself. I'm honest about who I am. I'm, I try to get them to be honest about who they are. And, you know, and then we find out where that is, you know, um, travelers can, you know, like I said, you know, just following through with your word, making sure that the travelers, you know, understand that you're keeping that too. You know, it's so easy to just make a bunch of rainbows and butterflies at the front end, but like, Hey, you, you could say something about this hospital. I mean, and it'd be, you know, a horrible situation actually. And then you get them there and you promise like, Oh, this is going to be the greatest assignment of your life, you know? And so that's where the experience, the education, those are all the things that I feel that help build the relationship because it's just like dating in a sense, you know, it's like, Hey, we're filling each other out. We're kind of checking in on each other. We're seeing what works best. And, you know, sometimes they're failed relationships because something happens on the back end or whatever it might be. But I am always trying to make sure and set those expectations on the front end for what could be worst case scenario and what's best case scenario. So they, they go in understanding that. So the nerves and the jitters and all that are kind of away. And again, when you when you exceed and you hit those promises like, hey, this hospital system that I'm about to send you to, I promise you it's going to be a break for you. You're going to get your lunch breaks. You're going to get X, Y, Z. Then they get there and that happens. Oh, my gosh. And th then the trust is just goes through the roof and right. it just you can build further from there. So, you, you know, I, I think everybody talked about it, like sometimes personalities don't match. Right. Maybe I'm just a little bit too much. Uh, I got a little too much energy for you and you're a little bit more low key and you're like, man, Adam, you just wow. When you get on the phone and you're just like, wow. Um, well, you want to be you want to be excited about talking to yeah. the nurse and the nurse should be excited about talking to you. It shouldn't be this. Oh, man, JT's calling me like, oh, my right. and Olivia's calling me. Oh, man, Chelsea's calling me. You know, you want them to be excited and know that, right. hey, my, my people are checking in on me. And what if they don't? What if what if there isn't? Like, I guess I'm I'm looking for a trap. I'm looking as a traveler's perspective, right? JT, you're a great guy. We would get along, but maybe somebody else wouldn't. And, and just for whatever reason, I don't know. You rub me the wrong way. Like, as a traveler, am I comfortable? Am I safe to yeah. say? Is there another recruiter I can work with over at TNAA? One hundred percent. So you know, we actually have a process here where even if a recruiter doesn't feel the same thing, we can go, hey we think that you would be a better personality match with this individual. I've had people not want to work with me simply because I'm a male, you know, and that was kind of shocking to me initially when I started doing this, but, but I've understand, I understand it to some sense with certain people and vice versa. Some males don't want to work with males and some females don't want to work with whatever. So we always give the autonomy to the nurse. We never pinhole them. We never hold it against them. Anything along those lines. We want you to have a great experience. We want you to work with a great agency that you're comfortable with. And again, we have a hundred plus recruiters here. So yep. there's plenty of people to work with. Great. And, and, and Chelsea, you know, I always looked at you have, uh, you have one chance to make a first impression and many times first impressions are lasting impressions. So when it comes to building relationships and trust with with the nurses and the nurses building that trust how how do you how do you do that when you when you first meet yeah so i mean this is like i said it's all it's all over the phone so you have to kind of i guess i don't know use your words in a sense you know what i mean so it's like i pretty much i'll go in i'll explain a little bit about myself too and i pretty like i listen to them too and i just make it so that i'm relatable um if there's something that they ask me and i don't know the answer to i will find it i'm not just gonna leave them hanging or anything like that and then i come back with an answer and granted it may not be the answer they always want but i come back with an answer and i feel like in that specific scenario like that in itself can build trust there just because you're not leaving them hanging you're not just being like okay like i'll find you an answer and ghost them or something you know right. like you find something and that in itself if you're just continuing to talk to them um get to know them and then not kind of spitting out all these different contracts that 
maybe is not even the right fit for them. Um, for an example here, there was someone that uh, she had called in and wanted a specific assignment and didn't want a specific assignment. And someone was just giving her all these options to places she didn't want. And she was like, I, I don't even think they heard me. And I was like, okay. And then a week later, she got on an assignment with me. And granted, that doesn't always happen. I've had someone that we've been waiting to find or something for two years now. And she just doesn't, there's nothing that she wants. But like, there's all these different cases where like, she still has trust in me because we've been trying for two years. Right. And then the other person has trusted me that I didn't just picture something like someone else had at the place where she like doesn't want to go in like North Pole, Alaska or something like that. Like she doesn't want to go up there. So I feel like that too, just kind of getting to know them and not throwing them out things just because, I mean, granted, if it's, if they're here for, they want to travel for the money, obviously throw out the high paying assignments that they want. But on things like that, where if someone's going for an experience, don't pitch them something thousands of miles away to where it's like opposite of what they want <laughs> you know i feel like that too just getting to know them and that in itself just builds a relationship and builds the trust and just honesty and be transparent yep and olivia i'm gonna i'm gonna switch this up a little bit for you once again both sides um how do re, how do the travelers how do they build trust with the recruiters because we focused a lot on what recruiters can do to build trust with the travelers but from 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 the perspective of you know there's there's some travelers out there that might be not the best people to work with they might be difficult i don't know what it is uh but i'd just be curious you know as a traveler out there when they're engaging with a new recruiter how do they help to establish that trust that there's somebody the recruiter wants to work with because let's face it if, if you're a difficult individual uh typically recruiters are going to probably find somebody who's going to make their life a little bit easy, not a nightmare. Right. And I mean, I think there's, you can play devil's advocate on both sides of things. I think, you know, there has been the difficult nurse before that is maybe hiding something in a background or maybe has been let go from multiple agencies or, you know, is submitting with multiple agencies to the same job. A lot of it boils down to, I think, you know, either being afraid to expose who they really are because they made a mistake or, you know, just being unaware of the market. Like one of the first conversations what I have is like, what are your biggest fears about traveling? Like JT said, I will go in there and tell them every worst case scenario, every best case scenario so that there is never a surprise. But on the flip side of things, when I have that first communication, I'm also asking them questions. Is there anything that would come up when we're submitting that would prevent you from getting a job, you know, background or, or prior work history that I need to know? Because if they've been essentially blacklisted from an entire vendor, then we're looking at potentially, you know, multiple hospitals that they can't work at. Or if they have a prior arrest record for assault, there's, you know, a good chance that they can't work or have been reported to the Board of Nursing for something. You know, those are, there's small hiccups that have come up. For example, I think I had a nurse a long time ago that when they were 18 or 19 got a uh, DUI. Again, this is a 35-year-old individual at the time, has never been in trouble since, but it was something they were scared to tell me. And I just tell them, hey, there's no judgment. At least, you know, thank you for sharing because I know that it is something private and it's not something I'm going to go tell the world, but so that I can tell our compliance team, hey, when this background check's going through, just so you know, most background checks only go back seven years. Some, depending on the hospital, do go back lifetime, but be aware that this is in their file. Um, you know, I think it is also establishing with the traveler that it is okay for them to work with multiple agencies. They can work with me, JT, and Chelsea at the same time. And, you know, my biggest thing is I, I'm transparent to you. Be transparent back to me. That's okay. I'm not going to get it every single time. There might yeah. be something JT has that I don't. And just tell me, hey, if you tell me you only want Spokane, Washington, and I'm only sending you Spokane, Washington, PCU days because those are your specifications. And then I find out you went and took an assignment with JT in Charleston, West Virginia. My question is, what happened? 
why I had no idea that you were even looking at Charleston, West Virginia, right. because every conversation we had said Spokane, Washington. So let me know that's okay to change your mind. It's okay to change your mind a hundred times, but tell me, Hey, I was really hoping for Spokane, but that's not working out. Now I'm looking for the highest paying assignment or my family situation changed and I need to go to this area to help out with family because nothing stings worse for me than a missed opportunity that I, I could have helped with, especially if it's a hospital that I have and that I have a good relationship with. Those are the things for me that I look for that might be red flags on the traveler side of things. Were you not comfortable enough with me and our relationship to tell me the truth? Because at the end of the day, I tell every traveler, look, this is a business transaction. This is your livelihood. I am, you're never going to hurt my feelings for telling me the truth, like it or not. So yeah. I'm always here for you. For example, when Chelsea was talking about the nurse that she hasn't placed in two years, I have a nurse that was one of the first nurses I ever talked to when I first started recruiting. She was very specific on location, very specific on needs. And I've never placed her because she decided that staff was, staff agency stuff was better for her as far as like per diem jobs that she was actually staffed through the hospital or internal contracts because they would allow local people. So I think for her situation, she's given and, and me the, tons of referrals just because of the relationship that we built up. And it's something, okay, I missed it on this time. For example, I have a nurse starting with another company on Monday. It's the simple things of reaching out to them on their first day to say, hey, happy first day. I hope you have a great assignment. And still checking in with them once in a while like you do your own travelers. Let me ask you this. Uh, we talked about it, Olivia, you hit on it. Uh, JT, what is your take on working with multiple recruiters? What should they know? I mean, for me, I'll say, I'm telling people, look, if I'm going to look for a job, I want to connect myself with maybe three to five recruiters that I trust, right? I, so I have the biggest area of opportunity yeah. for myself. Um, but when you're working with multiple recruiters, what are the things that we need to be aware of? I mean, this is my biggest thing is, you know, there are agencies, recruiters, so on and so forth that can have access to more than others. Am I the biggest proponent of going and getting five agencies? No, I'm going to be honest with you. Not at all. Um, maybe a couple recruiters, two or three that you really trust. Yeah. I mean, I get that, but any more than that is a lot because you're, you're putting yourself through every bit of credentialing, initial credentialing that you're going to have to do every agency. You got to do a checklist referrals or references, excuse me, work history, getting vetted, all that good stuff. Um, you know, so I think the biggest thing for me though, is being transparent and making sure that if you, the nurse, you got to be transparent with me. I don't care if you're working with Olivia and Chelsea as well, but like, Hey, if you're submitting, trying to submit through me to the same hospital that you have Olivia sending you to, you will be flagged for rate shopping. They will kick you back. And it, and it, it, it kind, of, kind of tarnishes your name. So that's what you want to be careful of that you guys probably don't see as much on the back end. Um, and where I really try to protect my nurse, whether she ends up taking a job with me or not, because I don't want them to fail at all. I want them to only find success. And hey, if you call me and you're like, I ended up being placed with Olivia. I know we were able to, you know, do X, Y, Z for the last couple of months, but um, it's just not going to be, you know, we're not going to work together. This go around. That's, that's okay. So uh, again, it just comes back to the transparency and letting, you know, us know what is going on with the other recruiters. So we are not stepping on each other's toes. Awesome. And, and I'm looking at this, this has been great. We're, 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 we're getting close to the end and there's a few more questions that I wanted to ask. And so I'm just going to, uh, pitch this over to, to Chelsea is uh, talk to me about working with a recruiter versus working through automated systems. Uh, what, what's the value? What's the benefit? What's the pros and cons of both? Yeah. So for me, I mean, I've been in this industry for two years, but I wasn't in it before that. So I haven't really had a whole lot of experience with someone running into someone working with like I, they worked with other recruiters, but not like an automated system type of thing. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if I'm probably the most um, qualified one to answer that question specifically. Um, as far as that, you don't, so I guess they don't work directly with the recruiter. It's through everything behind the scenes or is that? Yeah, I think, and, and maybe Olivia, did you have any I experience? 
or, or JT with the automated systems and, and uh, kind of. Well, I think you know everybody has, well, you can get on any kind of platform and, you know, do automated ordering or whatever, but that's all it is, is you don't really have insight on, if you're not aware of these hospitals, if you're not aware of the area, you don't have that recruiter on the other end to like, Hey, talk to you about, Hey, I just had a traveler there that had a horrible experience on that floor. I don't think that's probably the best, you know, jump right now. You don't have someone actually talking to you about your goals. You don't have someone actually tailoring an experience for you. You know, I think that's huge because all you're doing on an automated side is you're just firing off. You're creating noise. All right. You don't have account managers following up for you. You don't have these people actually pushing your files, recruiters following up. It is literally automated. And so I think that's the biggest kind of drawback for me. But um, but also it's you know, it, it works for some people. And I'm not going to say it's not um you know, a catch for some, because it is, some people don't want to talk to people. Some people are super type A and have their, you know, their, their eyes dotted and their T's crossed and they don't want to communicate with anybody. They just want to go to the hospital and do their thing. That's where I think nurses can find some good experience in that. But also I've people that are like that. I'll, I'll still get phone calls from them, man. They screwed my pay up, man. I had issues with credentialing, man, this, this it issue. Cause that's what it is. It's a bunch of it guys ultimately behind um, a platform. So, yeah. Olivia, yeah, do you have any oh sorry, Chelsea. Go sorry, ahead. I was just gonna say no, that's crazy to me because as um I mean with A B we work like 90% of our contracts are all direct. So we have direct communication with the facility. We have account managers that directly communicate with them and staff them for 15, 20 plus years. So that to me is just wild because like I like to talk to them about like my experiences I've had with other nurses and what they've told me about their time on that contract. So that to me is crazy because I'm used to just the direct communication type thing and not going through something that's, I guess, I don't know, not a human. <laughs> and Olivia, as a nurse, did you ever, did you have any experience working through a, a self-service kind of platform? And So I would say two of the companies that stick out to me were newer when I was, you know, recruiting and they existed when I had already been recruiting, but JT kind of hit the nail on the head to me. It's not a one size fits all. And, you know, I didn't need much. Could I have been successful with them? Sure. Um, but, and if you're someone who likes minimal communication, maybe it's for you. My biggest fear is that when, unfortunately, something hits the fan, who's in your court? And like JT said also, you know, I provide insight. JT provides insight. Chelsea provides insight on like, hey, I've had a traveler there and this is the reason why I don't think maybe, although they're paying amazing, maybe this is why it's not a great fit. I want you to have the best assignment every time. And that tangibility or that person to reach out and fix payroll or deal with compliance and kind of escalate things up the chain of command is not there. So not that's, there. it's yeah. a risk you take by using an automated system versus a real recruiter well and i think where the recruiting agencies are are evolving is everything you're talking about is being an advisor being a career coach being a counselor right it's it, the value of a recruiter back in the day used to be i have the jobs i i liken it much to the realtor right the realtor's value was they had the mls listings you had to go to the realtor because they had the access to the job to the, to the homes and with all of the in, in introduction of, of, of technology, it, it basically shifts to give us, much like jobs, the ability to go, I can go find any house. So now I want that realtor. I'm not going to just buy a house online, right? I'm not going to just maybe change a group. Maybe some people can. Maybe I'll get an apartment or maybe you're so experienced. So I, I think you're right. It's meeting them where they want. But for somebody who's making some big life choices, you know, the realtors didn't get replaced because they had value and they had value on the things that we talked about, providing advice and guidance and counseling and insight that you're not going to get from a job posting or a, or a you know, MLS posting. And, and that's really where I see the value of working with a great recruiter is having that knowledge, that industry knowledge, that experience, uh, a network of people, even inside the organization, if they're not the right ones that they can get you connected to. And it can feel a little lonely when you're figuring something out like pay and you don't know who to contact and you're submitting an online form. Um, hey, we are we are like right at time. I want to give everybody an opportunity to uh, just kind of recap and any final thoughts uh, for for the travelers out there. 
Um, and uh, Chelsea, start with you. Just any thoughts? I know we were looking at talking about maybe even housing and, and things to consider when, when making those decisions, how to find the right one. But any any final thoughts we haven't hit on already, Chelsea, that you would like to share with the audience? Yeah, no, I just want to. I think everyone, I mean, both Livia and JT, we all pretty much, I think, covered a very big variety of everything. But I pretty much just want to like, I don't know, kind of have a takeaway that they like, you have to have a good relationship. Like, I think that'd be the first thing is vet your recruiter just as if like we are vetting the nurses, um, make sure that you can trust them and be there. They're transparent. You're a transparent, like everything in there, build that relationship. Um, that'd be probably my biggest, biggest takeaway too. have someone that can either help you find housing or has a housing department that can help you. It isn't just kind of like, throwing you to the wolves on this assignment and saying like, go fend for yourself. Like here, you're going to make good money. Go do that. You don't want to find someone like that. Um, that's kind of the biggest takeaway is just pretty much, yeah, just vet your recruiter as, as well and make sure that um, I guess if you're looking on great recruiters, they, they can back up everything they're telling you. And it isn't just something that they're trying to tell you to get you on a job. Um, just make sure that they have your best interests and they will always advocate for you. Olivia takeaways. I mean, everybody's talked about it. I think we covered a vast majority of co like different topics that we could talk about. I think the biggest takeaway for me too is, is vet them. Make sure that they're a good fit for you. And if the personality is not right, go find one that is. And there's nothing wrong with trial and error to get to that point. If you love what the company has to offer, but that recruiter just isn't a fit, go find another one that is. And, you know, this is probably going to be a duration of your travel experience long decision. So make sure that you take the time to build that relationship. I mean, one of the best things that I've done is open my house up to when my travelers come through Reno, they come over for dinner, we go out to dinner. We've done Atlas meet and greets and places where we have tons of nurses because we want to get down there to show face because for a long time, I am a voice on a phone. I want to be real and tangible and I want them to know more about me than, and me know more about them than, Hey, where do you want to go for your next assignment? When do you want to right. start? I, I have some of them that have become like family and haven't traveled in years and still reach out. So find that, find that person that's going to have your back through everything. Awesome. JT, wrap us up. Final yes, thoughts. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. I just want to say thank you to TGN, great recruiters, you, Adam, Olivia, Chelsea. Thanks for all of us just being able to spend this time together. Um, my final thoughts are just, you know, listen to what we're saying. We're, we're coming to you from a piece of experience and education and, and you know, really just like, like they're saying, find the people you want to work with. But um, I just want to say I look forward to helping anybody that wants to come our way. T TNAA, we're always open and looking for new nurses to work with and looking for the best nurses out there. So just want to thank you all for your time. Um, and Adam, thank you again so much. Yeah, my pleasure. I mean, uh, you know, we don't exist without great recruiters like you. And, and that's the goal is to help create great recruiters, help you do the best that you can, help provide transparency and, you know, be open to getting that feedback i mean i think right there off the bat when somebody's open to that feedback uses it for uh improving what they're doing improving that experience i i think that speaks volume so i mean i would say to any traveler out there if one of these three aren't the ones for you uh you can visit greatrecruiters.com and in the upper right you can click on find a recruiter let us know what you're looking for let us know what you're doing and we're going to get you aligned and if that person's not aligned they're going to align you with somebody else uh, but really, uh, Olivia, if they need to get a hold of you, what's the easiest way to get a hold of you? Any way they prefer email, call, text, that you name it, I got it. All right, we'll get that information out there. And JT, um, same thing, I prefer phone calls. I mean, I love to connect with over the phone or text, but are, do you guys have our information? Do you want us to spout that out right now? You can, you can spout it out right now. Uh, my number is 843 407 0872. <laughs> That is my direct number. You can call me at any time. Okay. Thanks, guys. Olivia, would you like an opportunity to share your number? Sure. Mine is 516-458-4723. That is my personal cell phone number. So that is 24-7. Um, but feel free to reach out anytime. And Chelsea? Yep. Yeah, I have. I mean, e email, text, you can do both. My phone number is 480-237-4672. And that is, I mean, my number and it goes directly to my cell phone. So same thing. 
Awesome. If you're interested in learning more about great recruiters, <clears throat> just from a traveler perspective and how we're helping, or if you're an agency out there thinking, you know what, we want to be part of this as well. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll give you my email because it's easy. It's adam at greatrecruiters.com. And to echo what JT said, um, really appreciate uh, the Gypsy Nurse for uh, allowing us to speak. I, I hope this session was valuable uh, for the, the listeners out there. You've got four people on the phone that are here to help create better experiences for you. We understand that this is your life. This is your livelihood. This is this is how you take care of your family. And we want to make sure that we're removing all of those barriers, all that friction to help you make that best decision. So uh, with that, uh, I wish everybody uh, a wonderful evening and just really appreciate once again, Chelsea, Olivia, JT, uh, so much valuable insight that you provided. And thanks so much for, for joining us today. And that's a wrap. Thanks for Thank having you. me. Thank you for watching the Gypsy Nurses Spring 2023 virtual conference sponsored by TravCon. You can watch this session again or others you may have missed or would like to watch again on the gypsynurse.com under the events tab and by clicking on demand. Thank you TravCon for being our sponsor. Don't forget to get your early bird tickets to get the best price you can get.